Yes, welcome to the Photography Salon. This is the first official Photography Salon with the incredible Harley Moonkin. Hello, Harley. Hello, thanks for having me. That's okay, it's a real pleasure. Um, Harley is joining us from home. I'm joining you from home and I pretty good guess that you're all at home. So <clears throat> you're all flooding in now. Thank you very much for joining us. Harley and Nadine, how are you? Yeah, really good. I mean, just adapting as everyone is, enjoying the sunshine. Running a business from the corner of your spare room, which is pretty much, yeah. pretty much exactly what I'm doing now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very strange days, very strange days. It's really good yeah. to see you. Um, this is, seems to be how we see everybody these days, just on screen. But there you are, at least we can see each other on screen. Is it bad now um, that I've actually got fear of going back to work? So because nice. I'm really actually starting, I've, I'm kind of settled in to being at home and I thought a couple hours on the laptop from bed with a cup of tea or so, and then the idea of like, oh my God, I'm going to get up at seven o'clock in the morning and go to a job. I know, I know. That's quite know. daunting. Do I recognize anyone who's attending yet? David R. Hello, David R. Ilke and Franz are in the house. Ilke and Franz are in the house. I don't know if you know Ilke and Franz's work. Ilke and Franz are going to join us as guests on the Photography Salon in a few weeks' time. Our, our current guest has just left. Oh, she's back. So, yeah, those of you who know Ilke and Franz's work, um, I think they'll be with us on May the 7th, and I'm, I'm interviewing them, so I'm pretty excited about that. If you don't know the work, check out Ilke and Franz on the various channels. They're exceptional. So I should tell everybody who you are for those who don't who don't know you. Um, Harley Moonkamp. Uh, I've known Harley for about ten years. Um, Harley Moonkamp. I would say ten years ago was uh, a fresher at high school, as the saying goes, um, and was really just beginning her career. And now, ten years later, Harley has gone through being photographic assistant. Uh, become a photographer in her own right, built up her own client base, um, moved into production. You started offering a sort of a whole service. You were a, you were a, you were a full service photographer, as I think of it, where you were actually arranging stylists and hair and makeup and location. You were doing everything for the shoot. You've now launched Sticker, Sticker Studios, um, which to those of you who don't know, Sticker Studios is a, is a full service creative production company working with brands working with everybody um and creating creating content whether that's sales or video or i know you've recently been looking at animation um yeah so it's been an incredible 10 years you 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 yeah i, I look at your work rate and you you shame me i work hard but you you shame me so that's who harley is she's in 10 short years gone from uh really starting out to now running a, a business that's employing how many staff have you got now um there's about five of us on full time yeah amazing, amazing. yeah so i thought it would be useful in the photography salon to, to speak to you and to to allow people to to discover how you manage that in such a short space of time and it's we we both know it's not about technical ability it's about communication and application and an attitude really um it's funny funny enough john i know this is uh something that we want to touch on later but um i think one of the best pieces of advice of advice that i remember from the beginning was from you and uh it was always and i always still think that about business i never think i can do a job better than anyone else i just think it was that always that thing that stuck with me that you said that was like when someone walks in the room, if you can be their friend in the first five minutes, your day will be easy, your job will be easy, and you can, um, and you can, the, sorry, John. You've forgotten the end of that advice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to turn off Instagram live. Okay. And um, it's feeding back. And, uh, and the best advice I got was from you really saying that, you know, if you can be friends with your clients and your people in your team, uh, then, you know, communication will be easy 
and attitude is yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no doubt about it. I think everybody who, who, who is a photographer who works for clients, it's your presence in the room. You, you need to own that room and you need to run it. It is exhausting because you are the guy who has to make the decision on everything, oftentimes. Um, and the bridge of trust is definitely with you. So, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. For me, the most important part of any shoot was the first five minutes when you saw people arrive and thinking, right, who do you want to be and who do you want to be and who do you think you are and and just trying to fit in amongst that group in a way that you you are friendly but firm. Um, so, basically, uh, you were a, you were a you were a young woman who I who I met who clearly just decided she was going to be a photographer, um, and you did that. You moved into production. The production side of things, I take it that was a business decision. I think um, I fell into production by mistake. Really, I th I think sometimes when you get sent on a job as a photographer. Um, and whether the brand or another production company have brought the vision to life, but you also feel like it's your responsibility um, to create that vision. And sometimes if they'd pulled in parts that you didn't agree with, you didn't have much say. Um, so for me, it became a bit more of a solution um, to that because I would, I would kind of over recommend things whether it be like why don't we try this studio or don't worry i'll find the studio that i think would work mainly um to try and make sure that i felt really confident with how the shoot was going to look sure. so then kind of started doing production as a byproduct of that really so really doing production allowed you to ensure that you could deliver the concept that you had that you had yeah. asked for the, or that the, the the client was asking for it was a it's, control is sometimes used in a in a bad way, but it was it was to allow you control of making sure that that vision came through. Exactly, and I think especially because you are judged on that picture, and if somewhere along the line, the uh, the people that had booked me had maybe made a weird decision about the location, and my pictures didn't look good, I felt responsible for that. So then I kind of started over overbearingly giving <laughs> my thoughts and suggestions and ended up kind of producing it myself. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a double-edged uh, sword. It's a good thing and a bad thing. It, it does give you control, but it creates that, it makes that whole pre-production stage so much busier, as, as, you, as you know. You, you work across stills and video and you're now starting to move into animation a little partly because of the circumstances we're under. Um, which of those do you enjoy most? Um, I think for me, actually, the variation of the job is probably my favourite part, being able to jump from a still shoot to a video shoot. I, I personally just love problem solving feels like it gives me the adrenaline and I love it. It's like little Rubik's Cube puzzle and you're like, oh, I don't know how to do that. I want to do that. So it's kind of that feeling. Um, so I think whatever's new feels the most exciting. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I think I, when I'm working on one thing for a long time, I miss the other thing. Yeah. So if I'm on a video shoot for ages, I'm like, oh God, this is going on for so many days. I wish I had my photography shoot where you were just there for one day. And then if I'm in the office too long, I miss getting back on set. So I kind of like the variation. It's funny, I, um, when, I, uh, when, I, when I stepped into video, and I don't know if anybody watching is, is in that process or is thinking about making that step or moving from stills into video, I, 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 kind, of, I kind of felt really rejuvenated. But I think about six or seven films in, um, I was done. And I, I so just, just conversely, it, it, I'm glad I did it. And I gl I'm glad I have that in my armory. But personally, I'm loving stills again. And I, and I watch you to see if you'll, um, if, you'll, if, you'll, if you'll get to that same place. Um, I will definitely fall back in love with wanting to be a full-time photographer again at some point I know it will happen well it's a question I was going to ask you you you've, you've built this now um 
And Sticker Studios is, it's a young business, but it's a very dynamic business. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of what you've achieved and I'm actually not surprised by what you've achieved. But I wanted to ask you, so that, I mean, there's a lot of photographers who will make that step into video. There's a lot of photographers who will think, hang on, I can, I can do this production service for the client and I can go forward and I can see we can take care of the whole thing for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I need to ask you now, are you, do you feel like an image maker or do you feel like an account manager? Currently, I feel like a new mum. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have to look after brands. I have to look after my staff, my freelance staff, the projects. Yeah. I have to nurture people, tell them they're doing a good job. And that is my priority at the moment in growing the business. Um, I don't personally feel as much like an image maker as I used to. Um, I kind of pass off a lot of jobs to other photographers. It, was, it actually was because when the business started taking off and we were getting really busy, if I was on shoots and my team needed help or a client has requested something, the overwhelming sweat of dread that I'd be then trying to be creative holding a camera became quite stressful. So I thought, actually, there's a lot that other people can do this job, but this business is my business and I have to look after that. So yeah, new mum feeling. I identify a lot with what you're saying. And, 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 and again, for the people who are watching who are in the formative stages of their career or established in sales and they're thinking about moving into video or they're thinking about moving into all service production, it is a price you pay. It, it is a price you pay that you, you suddenly realise I'm not really a photographer anymore. I'm, I am trying to get, build business and I'm trying to get new clients. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a therapist for that client who, uh, so it, it's just worth, it's just something to pay attention to guys. Sometimes you might look at other photographers who are, who are taking on those roles. There is definitely a price to pay. There's definitely a price to pay. Um, yeah. And I've got a good question here from Ross Ferguson. How did the video side start? Was it a, conscious decision to move into it. I, th I think the alternative to that was it a conscious decision or would, were you led by your clients? You saw that they were yeah. working it or... So actually um, I got into video because, so within my production company, I have a business partner, Luke, who I kind of teamed up with. And we didn't mean to set up a company. We were just like two friends. He worked as a film director and he was servicing production with his clients in the same way that I was doing with stills. Sure. So um, I kind of noticed that actually, if I offered my clients video services and he added stills onto his um, video service, then we could kind of work together in that way. So I was led into it with Luke and um, it was a lot of learning on the job. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how I started. So, so, you, so your trip, your, your journey into video, you you wouldn't think of yourself as a director. You feel that that's part of your business now, you, because I think of you personally uh, as that you did start to produce video, that you were shooting video. But yeah. It that you think of it as part of your production company rather than something that you do as a director. Yeah. Well, we started off because we were doing a lot of fashion films initially, because my clients before were like high street. Uh, clothing brands and um, we started off initially well I mean, the boom of social media everyone needed behind the scenes content or social media videos yeah. and as a fashion photographer you can direct those films yourself yeah. I kind of started off doing that and bringing a camera team in and then um, my business partner um, came from an ad agency so his vision was a lot bigger and had worked on much bigger productions. So he kind of developed the video um, part of the business. But I would say now we're probably two thirds video. In the early days, I know that you, you did a fashion PR internship and I know that you shot a lot of bands. You come from a very musical family. Um, and that was an, an, obvious, an obvious path for you, um, which was primarily you just using the, the people that were around you 
to put in front of your camera and, and to network and just to build your portfolio that way. You, know, you did do an internship, you did an internship with me. Um, taking me personally out of it, would you recommend that to photographers, aspiring photographers, to get alongside A hundred thousand percent. I mean, if you want to, you know, if you want to do anything, you have to be immersed in it, you have to want to do it. And it's funny, when I have interns now come in to sticker, you know which one's heart are in it and which ones you'll see later down the line straight away because they're there on time, they haven't checked their phone, they're fully wanting to learn. And I love that because I think every, I mean, I started interning when I was about 15. I was so naughty at school, I just hated being there. Um, my attention span was so short. I was just loved being around work. And, every, and I knew I was never gonna learn it at a university, how to act on set, how it works. You have to be a part of that. So I think, um, I definitely think internships uh, d made my career happen a lot quicker. Um, and I definitely still recommend them to people. You can read books on what it's like to be on set, but until you're there and you see how quickly things go wrong, how quickly things change, what, what the attitude is, what the protocol is, you just won't learn anything. I think the, uh, and tell me if you agree, I think the, the beauty of internships is that you're you, you're in that room that we were talking about a little bit earlier, where you have to be permanently tap dancing and massaging egos and everything, and and it's caring. A, and yeah. Um, but you, as an intern, you get to walk in there with no pressure at all, and I, and I think it really humanizes the industry. It 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 stops it being this big thing and it just turns it into just a little gaggle of people who clearly not very many of them know what they're doing and they all have the same feelings and the same weaknesses and ego problems as everybody else. I think uh, I, I highly recommend internships, but as you know, I take my internship very seriously. It's a, it's a two-way relationship, but I would say to anyone who's out there wanting to get in, try and get in through an internship. And the fact that- I mean, we employed our, we employed our intern. She would now works at our at our company. And as you know, well, we, we still work together, but um, one of my interns ended up with shares in my company. It's just a great way in. Yeah. Sylvia Hoke has asked, what was the turning point when you began to get busy with clients? Okay, so, <laughs> well, I mean, you do years of, waiting for the phone to ring, pushing out, waiting for the phone to ring. So I don't think there ever feels like a moment where all of a sudden you've got lots of clients. I mean, now uh, 10 years in, Sticker Studios has lots of clients and we are busy. But I think as a photographer, it's a real slow burner, annoyingly. Um, but I think, sorry, John, repeat the question one more time. The question was, what was the turning point when you began to get busy? I th I, I'm interested in your answer because I, I can look back and think of two turning points where, 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 where the graph goes like that. There was one moment where I thought, oh, okay, I've, I've, I'm a professional now. Because I think you're hustling all day, all day, all day, pitching out, sending your portfolio. So by the time you get a client, you feel quite deserving. <laughs> so it doesn't feel like, um, so it doesn't feel like a huge achievement. But I think... Um, I always just, uh, to get clients, I just always looked at it and I still do. It was like, even with the internship, little stepping stone. I always imagine it like business is like a tree, like a family tree. And there's little stepping stones that you can use to get to where you're trying to go. So for me, I was quite young when I started my photography journey. I was like 17 and um, I knew I wasn't going to get taken seriously. So I uh, started out offering to do celebrity pictures, um, messaging talent agencies and saying, I'll do, the, I'll do like cheap headshots for the talent. And I started getting celebrity kind of pictures on the go. Then I went into a magazine to say, look, I've got these celebrity pictures. Will you, let, will you hire me? And then that was kind of the next level that I had to get to. Yeah. And then from that, I got noticed by a few clothing brands. And then the first job I re remember that felt like a turning point was, um, was when I actually had shot Paul Weller um, and I was 21 
and it was a pretty green campaign, Liam Gallagher's clothing line. And they printed it in the windows of Carnaby Street. And that for me was like, all right, I've worked really hard, but that picture just feels good. And then I think from that, it's that kind of snowball effect of like when you've got that at that moment and it's in Carnaby Street and you can email your clients saying, I've got a banner in Carnaby Street, you know, it starts a, it starts a whole new conversation. And that's the next layer of the tree that you've got to there. So absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Sorry, that's quite a long-winded answer. No, 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 I think it's important. And I also think it gives people who don't know you a glimpse into what you've done. It's, um, you're just constantly taking these small steps and you're trying this and trying that. But Harley, what Harley has achieved in the last 10 years is pretty amazing. It, it, it really is pretty amazing. And I see somebody who just kicks down the door. Um, and, and I, I, you know, there are a few people who have that type of DNA and I don't know if it's something that you can learn. I hope it's something that people can tap into and they can just think, yeah, well, I, I'm just going to kick the door down. I don't want to kick the door down and I feel really bad, but I'm going to kick the door down because there is categorically no choice about it. It's how shit gets done is you just kick the, you just kick the door down. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've seen you, I've seen you kick it down many times. Um, not everybody's in the industry, but those of you who are in the industry and hardly I say to you, photography in, in this post social media age is it's it's different i mean and i know that even you see that in the last 10 years you came into something that was that 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 had a it had a recipe you as you just said you shot for editorials and then brands notice you and then you start to shoot campaigns and all of those shoots but well, they lasted for at least a month you would do a, you would do a magazine and you were in you were in gq that month now a shoot lasts a day. It's, it's value in the world is a day. And, and we're seeing that absolutely turn this industry around. And your competition is everyone with a camera. Yes, <laughs> That's the yes. other thing now. Um, yes. Photographers are emerging left, right and centre. The, the value of photography seems to have kind of dropped. To the floor. To the floor because... Um, yeah, they need new content, new posts every four mm. hours. Um, so the workload is triple and the quality gets dampened because the budget is less because they're shooting every single week. So how, how, how do you survive that? How do you stay solvent? How do you stay relevant and how do you grow? I mean, it, there's, it, it, I almost feel that it's better for people who are coming into the industry now because they never knew the old days and they're not interested in hearing about the old days. Um, when I broke through the old days were the 1980s, that's what people were harking back to, and it, it just wasn't relevant. It just didn't mean anything. So the fact that we used to get this or get that, or this is how it worked, doesn't matter. Now in this world where people want so much volume um, for so little money, how, how, what, is you, what is your advice to people to, to use that and, and still succeed? Um, honestly, uh, the reason, part of the reason I set up Sticker um, was because of that, like I was shooting an ad campaign that would be out for a few months and then all of a sudden I'm pitching for a job that's a tenth of the money and shooting every few weeks. And in my, my um, solution to that was to get inside the brand marketing team uh -huh. and make sure that I was the photographer shooting every month. That yeah. was my solution. So I, rather than waiting for the phone to ring, I suggested social media campaigns that they could shoot, um, suggested a rollout plan of what those photos looked like. Yeah. knowing that I'm the one who's going to be shooting them. Yeah. That was that was kind of how I managed it. But I mean, there's still a lot of photographers shooting fashion ad campaigns and, you know, those jobs do still exist. Um, and I think staying, I do think there will become, I do think there will be a shift of, you know, really high-end, credible, artistic, beautiful pictures will always, you know, succeed yeah. um so i think like not trying to follow trends 
with photography um, and trying to, I don't know, for me, the kind of blogger and lifestyle photography isn't my thing, but, you know, high end, beautiful, artistic photography, I think will always still triumph and be a success. Yeah, I think it will always exist. I think everybody's just trying to work out what on earth is going on um, at the minute. And it's, it's, it's crazy times, but yeah. yeah, cream always rises. That's, that, that's the same. You've done a lot in 10 years. You're going to run out of fun new things to do. <laughs> Where do you see the next 10 years? I mean, I try not to think too far ahead because the pressure of anxiety gets a lot. But I think where Sticker is headed is become, be, becoming more like an ad agency. Um, within our team now, we actually have in-house creative division who are writing scripts for brands. So, um, I mean, in the past two years, I think we've shot about five TV commercials um, that we've scripted ourselves and uh, so that's kind of feeling more like an ad agency. And I think that's the direction that we've got going for the next few years. So you can see yourself growing into being a, I can see you growing into being a creative agency. I'm not sure about an ad agency, but what's Yeah, going? it's that kind of space between like an ad, like a creative agency and a production agency, because a lot of the time the production agencies will have directors signed to their books, which we also have started doing now. Yeah. Um, and uh, shooting a lot more music videos and creative work. And, uh, but at the same time, yeah, we, we actually have in-house creatives, in-house editors, and we're a production company. So it's kind of that uh, middle, because I think also the reason why we, we started Sticker was a little bit of a problem solving because if brands are turning out these smaller campaigns all the time, um, the big ad agencies are too expensive yeah. and, um, and the production companies didn't have creatives. Yeah. So the brand marketing people or the social media people were slammed um, trying to come up with content ideas for every week and we were offering that service. So that was kind of how on our, the niche of our business. Yeah. Started, really. yeah. I think those are really good lessons and I think what Harley's done there is is recognized an evolution and recognized what what the client wants what the market wants um, and those little turning points it, it, those are the times when you really can jump in I, I spoke on this I spoke on a podcast or, or on the, the interview I did a couple of weeks ago about the absurdity of me the first film I ever made was for Louis Vuitton. And it was only because I walked in at that point where suddenly, God, it sounds like so long ago, but it was YouTube. Everybody wanted YouTube content. It was still before Instagram, before everyone realized how powerful it was. And it was just about walking in and saying, well, you've got a lower budget, that's fine. Uh, make a video, yep, that's fine, we can do it. And running with that because people needed that service. Um, that's no saturated. No. I also think I also think it's the braveness of having an idea and uh, and putting that forward to your client. Um, they might be saying, "Oh, you know, we've got these shoots lined up," and you think, "Actually, I've seen something that they're going to love. Mm. They haven't thought of it. Why are they not doing it? Maybe I'll write a script and send it to them with my work attached to it." That was really what me and Luke were doing a lot of the time. Um, and I, I, I mean, you do get people saying no thanks, but that's the worst that happens. Yeah. Um, and then they're thinking, oh, we hadn't thought of that. That's a great idea. And then regardless of whether we've actually done those type of jobs before, we were the ones coming up with the ideas and selling it to them. So that, that was a really big success for us. And everybody watching, it's so easy to access image buyers now. Um, through LinkedIn, something that I know that you're starting to use, through Instagram, through all the crazy channels. But the value in somebody who reaches out and says, hey, I love your product, um, and I've had this brilliant idea that you could do X, Y, Z, I'd love to come and see you and chat about it. Oof, the door's just flying open. Um, yeah. You need to deliver. But um, 
you know, when you have an idea about that product or that brand or that label or whatever, pitch it. It's so easy to pitch now. Nicole has asked a really good question and I don't know how we answer it. Um, it would be good to hear how different or similar it was for John and Harley at this stage of their respective businesses, stroke careers. Are the challenges harder today? So if, if so you're 10 years in and you're running your own business with five people. Uh, so when I was 10 years in, so that would have been, with this manifestation of me, that would have been roughly uh, 2012. Um, so in 2012, we were in a pretty similar place, to be absolutely honest. I had started going into video. Um, uh, yeah, and I was probably carrying a staff similar to what you were carrying. Um, oh, you know, uh, I copy everything you do, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> do you know we've got the same website? Do we? Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, I don't think you copied me, and I definitely didn't copy you. I own all the same lights that you own, <laughs> same camera, whatever you've got, I'll buy it. <laughs> uh, the challenge is it's interesting, and I mean, what I would say, Nicole, is um, that there are similarities in what Harley and I did, which was, uh, right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to get in front of people, I'm going to say, yeah, I want to shoot this, and, and then you reputate, then you find people are approaching you, you're not having to go out and find people, people are starting to approach you. Um, and then you start to ride that crest of a wave. And I, I would say that, uh, I would say that there are definitely similarities in that I got, I, I started to carry quite a big staff and we, we were offering a lot of services. What are the challenges? There was a lot more budget around even just eight years ago than there is now. Um, uh, but the technology to create things um, is so much more accessible. Um, the, the concept of a 4K video camera, I, I was blessed, Blackmagic gave me a 4K video camera. You've got 8K phones now, but you know, the amount of stuff you had to buy to handle and process 4K and everybody was saying it's just this, nobody needs it. Something else I want to say to people who are watching is that it's great to, to grow and it's great to build, but you do stop being a photographer. You, the more the more of those services you build, you stop being a photographer, and and it's a very difficult balance to to get right. Um, I think the main thing was like a lot. You know, there's a lot of ph photographic agents out there, and I think both John and I didn't want to go down the photographic agent route, and we just wanted to do it all ourselves. Um, and so alongside that, you have to build your own photographic agency yeah, to look so. after yourself. And I think that was the similarities. Um, I, I, I want to lift the mood a little bit. Um, yeah. I've got a few questions here that I think might become standards in the photography salon. Um, what's the biggest lie you've ever told a client? Um, that we know how to make a video go viral. Did you just write? No one, no one does. No one does. But everyone <laughs> always, like, all the clients always say, "Yeah, you know, something that will go viral." You still have people Thanks. asking you to, "Can you, can you make it go viral? Does go viral even exist anymore?" Uh, yeah, they just want it to go viral. As long as it's going viral, I'm like, yep, yeah, this one definitely going viral. <laughs> You don't know. I wonder if post coronavirus, if people will still use that that term. What was the biggest mistake you made? Um, I think uh, undercharging. Um, sometimes you budget for stuff and things pop up, and you lose all the money, and then you go on set feeling really bad about yourself. Um, but you wait, you keep the client as long as you still have to do a good job and still spend just as much time. Um, so always have a buffer and contingency. Yeah. To, and I, th yeah. I think it's one of the things that people, people struggle with in the early days is what to charge. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you know what to charge when you realize you're paying to do a job. That's, um, yeah. I always think, get, think what you want out of it and then add 20%. And then if they say no, drop down 20%. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Always mark up high because it gives you somewhere to go when they say yeah. no. Yeah, yeah.
When was the last time someone asked you what for free? I'd kind of gotten to the point where I'd done quite a lot of celebrity PR pictures and um, you get a lot of magazines then saying, oh, we've got a shoot and you, you get to shoot this guy, but there's no budget in it. And you're thinking, right, so I'll go to work for free to shoot some guy who used to be in Coronation Street six years ago and isn't anymore and hasn't done anything since. And you think it's good for my portfolio. Yeah. I think that's the classic line. I think it's used a lot still is the exposure will be fantastic. Oh, the exposure is perfect, yeah. But I mean, you know, sometimes you do stuff for free to get an editorial. I mean, we, I did a shoot a couple of weeks ago um, just to get some creative juices flowing and we I had an idea and it was this men's shoot and I did, did it for free thinking that I would send it to a magazine just because I'd shot a lot of commercial stuff recently and I didn't have anything new or fresh or anything that had my personality in it. And, um, and then we actually ended up getting that into a magazine. Um, so which magazine was it? It was L China. It's not out yet. Um, but they actually ended up paying for it. So it wasn't for free, <laughs> but it's the kind of like, when your heart and soul is doing something for you, for your portfolio, and it's for free, like it's that's okay. But if I, people I, are asking you to do a job for them that they're making money on yeah. for free, no. Yeah, I think that's different. I'd say that um, creating something, even though you're not getting paid, and then using that as a as a body of assets to, to for marketing and to pitch editorially and pitch to clients. That's entirely different from uh, could you shoot our collection for free, please? It yeah. would be fantastic exposure for you. Yeah. If you can only give one piece of advice to aspiring photographers, what would it be? I've got loads. Be a plumber. <laughs> yeah, find a steady job. Um, I kind of said the advice that you gave me before, which I totally agree with, which is your personality is 80% of the job. Um, there's a million other people that are just as good as you, better than you. Um, you're, if they like you and trust you and can feel that you are going to be the best person for the job because you care about it more than anyone else and you've put all the work in and you're with them every step of the journey, that you will get the job and you will keep the client because they respect you and they know you're giving it 100%. Uh, that that has kind of always stuck with me. It's something my dad told me all the time. Be early, be be friendly, go the extra mile on everything that you do so that people always feel looked after and you will, you know, retain your clients. Um, but then I have another piece of advice that is only a new one because um, now at my agency, we actually look after other photographers and directors. Yeah. And... Um, something that I find myself saying more is to make your portfolio look like the jobs you're trying to get. And it sounds so basic, but then when someone's shot um, a shoe fashion campaign and then they're like, oh, but I really want to shoot this beauty for this beauty brand and they're pitching for a beauty brand. I'm like, make your whole portfolio beauty and then go to that beauty brand and you'll already be part of the, you know, of what they're working on. It sounds so basic, but it took me ages to understand that as well, because I kept shooting different types of stuff all the time. And my portfolio was like, well, this section's more flowers and female and this section's like this and this section's actors. And then it was like, well, who are you trying to, who are you trying to get as a client? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's a, uh... It's a hard lesson to learn, but my goodness me, it's a really important lesson. I, yeah. I, I was with an agent in New York. I went off to New York to pitch to agents and showed, it was showing this guy my book and he said, how many photographers are you showing me? How many photographers are you showing me? And I said, no, no, no this yeah. is all me. And he said, you have to, you don't understand. Pick you one. Understand. If you want to be, and so I say this out to everybody, if you want to be a car photographer, don't put anything else in your book. No matter how tempting it is, do not put anything else in your book. If you want yeah. to be a fashion photographer, do not put anything else in your book. Full stop. 
And as tempting as it is to think, oh, I've seen this great bit of work, I can shoot that, and, and then you shoot it and you put this thing in that's suddenly grainy black and white, you, you're just letting yourself down. You have to, the, 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 the market is so oversubscribed, they just want to know that you're the guy who shoots beans. And that, I tell you, that's how it works. You drop an email with a picture of a can of beans, the way this industry works is, if it's a nice picture of can of beans, you think, oh, that's nice. And if, God willing, they get a brief drop on the desk for Heinz beans, you, the, the connection is you. Um, it works so much now uh, for me on the other side because, and it, it took me so, so long to learn that, but um, even some of the directors that we have, uh, they're saying we want to shoot some sports ads. Um, we want to win Nike or Adidas jobs. And you pay hardly any money, by the way, because there's <laughs> a huge brand. But, but, um, and they want to win Nike or Adidas jobs. And it's like, well, they need to shoot. Why don't you try shooting some kind of urban music videos on the street where everyone's wearing the right type of get up and like you kind of build your portfolio to look like you're already made for that brand. Make sure your portfolio is relevant to the market you want to yep. sell your services to. Yeah. One little question from Seraphim here, which I think is, we're probably both going to give you the same answer, but, and it's only one perspective. Seraphim was asking, why not have an agent? Why not have an agent? I know loads of successful photographers with agents. Personally, I didn't like feeling like I was waiting for the phone to ring and I know that they're ringing, but you want to, uh, that's kind of my worst feeling. I want to be proactive. That's why I'm in it. That's what gets me out of bed. I like the excitement. I like the challenge. I like the adrenaline of going out there and getting my own work. That's kind of what makes me feel fulfilled. Um, whereas just being sent out on a job didn't really give me the same kind of satisfaction really. Um, which is kind of what I enjoy now about having Zika Studios is I'm out there, that is my main job now, I'm out there getting the jobs for everyone else and I feel good when I've achieved it. So I think it's just like a personal, a personal thing really. What about you? My answer to that question is the reason that I do not have an agent, and I did frequently have an agent, um, <sighs> we won't talk about that. Uh, and I actually had an agent in Paris who, who did get me work, but Nobody will sell you as well as you sell yourself. And if you're not able to sell yourself, you're going to really, really, really have a problem because the, the ability to walk in the room and say, I really want to work for you. And yes, we can make that work. If you feel you can't do that, holy shit, once you're in the room and they come in and say, right, make it, um, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Um, yeah, breaking through as a commercial, successful commercial photographer, you need to have broad shoulders and you're not born with them. I certainly wasn't born with them and, I, and I'm not sure if Harley was, you just- No, me. I mean, I've left, oh. me, I've left um, portfolio meetings and cried on the doorstep and asked someone to come and pick me up before. Like, <laughs> it's all fake, but you have to, but you want the job and you're there and you've tried and you've come all this way and you've got the pictures in your book and you're like ready to, yeah. to take it. So you've just got to swallow it and give it a go, even if it's nerve wracking or, yeah. You don't know if you're good enough. If you're good enough, just give it a go. Yeah. And the other thing I would say about agents, and on screen here we have Harley, who's now acting as an agent for directors. Agent Agencies are interesting. <laughs> I'm not going to look you in the eye, Harley. Agencies want to sell their agency. They don't want to sell you. And that's not because they don't like you. That's because Harley has bills to pay. She has a brand. She... It, that, that is what they have to sell, is they have to sell art partner, they have to sell whoever the agent is. It doesn't make them bad people, but at the end of the day, they don't really care if you get the job or if anybody on the roster gets the job. Um, an agent can definitely work. It was never the right model for me. Um, and I would say that I don't think you would have traveled so far in 10 years if you'd had an agent. And I certainly wouldn't have. 
but it definitely can work. Lots of photographers have agents. Most of them moan about them, but if it feels right to you, go out and get an agent. I think we're going to wrap up, Harley, because in a few minutes' time... We have to clap. We have to get our rattles and clap for the NHS, which is... um. It almost feels slightly insulting that that's what we're doing for people who are giving up their lives and applauding. I think as a nation, we need to do a little bit more for key workers once this once this is over. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining us. Harley, thank you so much for sitting in the chair for me. Um, this is the photography salon which we've launched as part of the community building program for the motel collection which you may or may not know is a gallery that i've built bolt the bolts onto my studio and I, th this should never be about me uh, obviously we're interested in who the guests are but really your questions are so 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 useful um, and that's why we're here is to maybe try and shine a light on where the path is and how, how you navigate it um i hope it has been fun and informative. Um, we will be back, the, the Photography Salon will be back on the 30th of April with art photographer and very successful advertising photographer Samuel Hicks. I don't know Samuel at all. And my gallery partner Richard Kalman will be hosting. Please uh, send us your questions. Please send us any ideas you have for the Photography Salon. All of you are here. You registered for this conversation you're now registered for the photography salon. So we will send you invites every two weeks as we do them. We're not trying to spam you, it's just easier. Um, Harley, I... Thanks so much, John, and thanks everyone for watching. Those of you who don't know Harley, just to let you know that you can follow Harley on Instagram at Harley Moon Kemp, um, H-A-R-L-E-Y-M-O-O-N-K-E-M-P. Check out Harley, keep an eye on her work. She is, she's, she's only just left the ground and she is going to fly so high. I'm already trying to work out how I hang, hang on to her coattails now so that she takes me with us. Um, thank you, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Harley, love you loads. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe and enjoy the peace. Thanks, Bye. -bye. Everyone. Bye.